welcome to my kitchen. So today I'm going to cook a recipe from the Little Swedish Kitchen and I'm going to make pea and potato dumplings. Or if you were gonna say it in Swedish, propkaka. Excuse my pronunciation there. So they are like the king of Swedish dumplings. You get them filled, unfilled with toppings. Normally just a simple potato dumpling, but I'm gonna make them with a bright hit of pea green, um, just to make it a bit more vibrant on the plate. Okay, to start off, I've got some boiled potatoes and I'm just gonna grate those. Now, the reason why you wanna grate them is because if you were to blend it, then it'd go all gloopy and mushy and we don't want gloopy and mushy. Make sure when you're boiling the potatoes that you heavily salt the water because the potatoes absorb the salt and it just makes for a more flavoursome dumpling. Okay, so potatoes are grated. I'm going to blend some peas. So these are just frozen peas. Don't need to use fresh peas. No pea pudding here. Make your life easy. Blend that with the rest of my ingredients. They're going in. My eggs, one, second one, in they go. A generous bit of salt, white pepper, allspice. That's something quite Swedish. You think Swedish food is not very spicy. It does have a little bit of spice and they like that warmth. So it's not like heat, really hot heat, like uh, in Asian food, this is kind of a gentle warmth. So cozy food. You're thinking it's a bit getting a bit cold outside, a bit dark. You want something warm and comforting. Nutmeg. I'm quite generous with my spices. And also, once you mix in the potatoes, the flavours are kind of diluted. So you still want to get that punch from the spice. Right. Now the noisy part. I'm just going to give them a little scrape. Blend it a little bit longer. That looks pretty good. So imagine you're making a pea smoothie. That's the consistency you want. Look at that green. Hmm. And it smells good. You get all those lovely spicy smells. I'm gonna add my flour and that's gonna bring everything together. It does help if you have a really big bowl to mix everything together. Otherwise you just have to be careful you don't get the flour all over your face, which is the kind of thing I generally do. These are gluten-free. I didn't, I totally forgot that. Not that that was a deciding factor of making these. Just so happens to be. Now it's just about mixing it all together. So Kropkarke, these Swedish dumplings, it's real Husmanskost. So Husmanskost is um, the traditional kind of home cooking you have in Sweden. The real comfort food, simple, nothing too complicated. Easy ingredients. I mean, if you think about potatoes, peas, it's nothing too exotic. Okay, so the consistency you're looking for is it should be slightly wet, but not too sticky. So if you're finding your dough's super sticky, just sprinkle in a little extra flour. But otherwise, this is what you're looking for. So if you touch it, so it's a little bit sticky, but it doesn't like, you know, you don't end up with a, a green, green hand. So that's your dough, your potato dumpling dough. It's a bit like when you cook pasta, you heavily salt the water. Makes for tastier dumplings. While we wait for my water to boil, I'm gonna start on my topping. Onion, the classic red onion. Just gonna finely chop this. All right, the trick to not crying when you chop an onion. Sharp knife, work quickly. Oh, I, uh, I think I am gonna cry. These are quite spicy. <laughs> it, you know, it's, it's cathartic. You know you can get those funny goggles? Nope, don't have those. I'm too hard now. I'll just go with the tears. I 
Look at all this, it's emotional stuff. Oh, I never thought I'd be crying in the kitchen. Pop it in the pan. A nice knob of butter. And not to forget some bacon. So if you're doing a veggie dish, then you can simply leave out the bacon. It's just as nice with the like caramelized onions on top and the lingonberry jam. You could always sprinkle some cheese on top. That works well. But yeah, uh, I do like my bacon. All right, bacon goes in. Okay, just turn the side on my board because I'm going to chop some chives. It's not the bacon side. Right, chop some chives. It's going to go on my garnish. It makes for a nice green pop at the end. And that little bit of onion flavour, that kind of fresh onion flavour. Now, right, dumplings. So they should be quite big. These are not knocky sized dumplings. More like a tennis ball, a little smaller than tennis ball. So out this portion, you would get 12. So if I do this. And so when the water is boiling, just gently drop them in. I'm going to add some white pepper, a little bit of allspice. I mean, season it to your liking. If you don't like these spices, just leave them out. It's really up to you how you do them. A bit of salt. Oh, it's a tad. I do like my spices. Bacon and the onions are caramelizing nicely, so they're almost done. Oh, I think I'm gonna have a little sip of tea. School, so cheesy. You don't school with a cup of tea, but anyway, it should be a glass of schnapps instead. I only have tea, just as good. Oh, so nice. But since living in Sweden, it's all about the coffee. They do like their coffee and their buns, or as you say, fika in Swedish. I'm just missing a bun. I'll just have to do with a dumpling instead. Right, what am I missing? I forgot to mention, we have got the quintessential Swedish ingredient here. If you're gonna have something Swedish in your fridge, then you need some lingonberries. So these are simply lingonberries with some sugar so you just mix some lingonberries with some sugar, let it sit, and they make a kind of raw jam. But that is a quintessential Swedish flavor. Your lingonberry jam. It's a bit like cranberry, when you have cranberry jam with turkey or red currant jelly. So you always have it with meatballs. Like most savory dishes, you'll have like some lingonberries with it. The Swedish kind of condiment you have with almost all your savory dishes. I mean, if you're gonna have Swedish meatballs, you have to have the lingonberry jam. So it's a must. Tart, bit sweet. Um, yeah, good way to liven up a dish. And also the color. I mean, if you think about the green with the chives and the dumplings with that red, it's just gonna pop on the plate. Um, yeah, I do like some popping colors on the plate. Right, come on, oh, look, we've got one dumpling. One dumpling is done. It's popped up to the surface. We've got one dumpling. <laughs> one dumpling, come on, where are the others? Which one's gonna pop up first? It's like a bit of a waiting game, isn't it? This could be like that slow Norwegian TV. You know, like this, so there's this a Norwegian TV program, which is, it's slow TV. So you watch a train 
do a journey or you watch a ship do a journey, but it's live. So the journey might take five days and you just watch the, like, the whole process. Ah, oh, we have another dumpling. So we just want three is a good number. Three is the magic number, as they say. Right, come on, dumpling. It's a bit like watching paint dry, isn't it? This is where it helps to, um, you could actually into, like roll your balls all ready to go and then pop them in all at the same time. I should read my recipes more. Yeah, so actually read the recipes I write and don't listen to me in the video. <laughs> There you go, here we go. Right, we got, we got the last one. We only need three. This is the fun of it. That's why I do videos, because you see how hopeless I am in the kitchen and it gives you hope at home. That's what I think. They're certainly not the perfect shaped looking uh, uh, dumplings. They're a bit more rustic. You know, Swedish husmanskost, which means um, home cooked food. You could always freeze them. So you can freeze them either when they've cooled down and you've cooked them in the hot water, boiling water, or you can freeze them when they're in dough form. So you can choose how you want to. You could even make really small ones that like, like a gnocchi and have it like more Italian style with a tomato sauce or olive oil and a bit of Parmesan on top. Also very nice. Okay, so the dumplings are done. I'm just gonna put my topping on. So sprinkle that on top. So like I said, if you wanted a vegetarian version of this, you could just use like the caramelized onions, just as nice. Or you could add a little bit of cheese on top. Then some lingonberries. And not to forget, a little pop of green on top with some chives. There you go. There you have my pea and potato dumplings. As the Swedish would say, smarklig måltid, which means uh, bon up or enjoy in Swedish.